Welcome today to to the Hobo and his girlfriend wrestling podcast. Oh, what's she doing in there? My name is Hobo Tom. The Daytona, well, maybe Daytona infamous or Daytona living living in Daytona. Hobo Tom. My girlfriend right now is in St. Augustine taking a bunch of pictures. She has a real job. Just go out in the street, collect aluminum cans, and just try to do odds and ends things every so often. Welcome to our wrestling review. And my name is Hobo Tom. My girlfriend again, not here. We will see her one day. I think by Helen Cell, I think. My band's left it, so I get to live stream. And then I'll get to say live. Adam Cole, baby! But right now, I'd like to open the show. I'd like to thank Nostrin. This clip is for you. And he posted a comment, kind of in the form of a question, something about Casey Katenza. Katenza, I can't even pronounce her last name. But she was actually in the last NXT Orlando that I went to. Again, he saw the video, so you got to see some free wrestling clips of NXT Orlando. Again, please like, share, and subscribe. Also, feel free to leave an email at hobo and girlfriend at gmail got. Um, again, um, his comment went something along the lines of, I don't have it up, but that's okay. I'm trying to figure out how to do two things at once on the computer. Actually, three things at once, because I'm already doing two things at once. And after that, things got a little confusing and convoluted. Next time, I will read his comment, though. And I'll do it this week for my Raw, my SmackDown recap show. This is the Raw Recap Show. Again, he was curious about her entrance. So again, we have a little clip playing. We just showed a little clip from. And my answer is that based on my poor hearing, for some reason they have a different entrance music. And I know when they first develop you as a character, i.e. professional wrestler, in NXT, they kind of tinker around with your entrances. Because I remember Princess Kimberly, I think, had a couple different entrances before she be before she became Amber Abby Leith. And then she's always going to be my princess, Princess Kimberly. So again, my only response is that hey, maybe they're trying to figure out what fits best with her. Maybe this was her first time wrestling in kind of a venue. It'll be interesting to see where things go from here. Again, I'd also like to thank Super Beast 1986. This next clip is for you because this is what happens when you realize that Super Beast is partnering with you. Again, there's a nice little fun clip there. Again, if you like and subscribe, leave a comment and email, you will get a little something special from me. 
and we'll see what happens. Maybe you can pay me money to drink. I know some people do that. That sounds dumb. I'll just drink anyway. I'm not paying you to drink. I'll drink because I choose to. But let's get to the real stuff. Raw. This, this was an okay Raw. It, it seemed really short in the beginning and seemed to drag on at the end. There's that kind of weird reverse effect that Raw has. Because normally it seems to go really slow. It seems to take four hours to go through the first couple of matches. The first two hours seemed like three, like four hours, and then all of a sudden it picks up at the end. This was the opposite. It seemed to go like first couple of parts. Granted, it was Memorial Day, and I spent a lot of time cooking. Before that, for my girlfriend and myself, because we had some nice, yummy mini cheeseburgers or cheeseburger sliders with pickles, mozzarella, cotto bites, and a and some yummy desserts. Again, she's my girlfriend. She just feeds special. She wanted avocado bites and mozzarella sticks. Avocado and mozzarella bites are what she gets. Or avocado strips and mozzarella sticks. Whatever. Well, let's get to Raw. Let's start off. Braun, Storm, Braun Strowman came out. Cut a really good promo. <laughs> the best thing is there's only one more week left till the Go Home Show. This has been taking way too long to build up. So Braun comes out. Starts around how he's going to be the monster in the bank. And it's just really good. Um, Finn Balor comes out, said, better to talk back, said, oh, I used to be the, I used to be the universal champion. Braun goes, there's some good competition for a little guy. And then Finn Balor did something really dumb. Slap Braun. So Braun just said, eh, eh not happening. Tosses him across the ring. Q Angle's music, you suck. You suck. You suck. Makes the first match. Yeah, really good surf and surf match. This is Braun versus Finn Bloor. Couldn't believe it. KO comes out to do commentary. KO's just there to stir up stuff. Kind of an agitator for now, I think. And I kind of get it. Just eggs people on. Gets them upset at each other, so... Against that old heel tactic of having the two people fight so that they're all softened up for him to beat up on. That's kind of classic. Should be an interesting go on the show. Again, the, the thing I love about this match and the reason why I gave it a surf and turf rating is that I just enjoy that clash of styles. Here you have this super powerful monster among men in Braun Strowman. You have the speedy technician in Finn Balor. It's just really fun to see how that goes. Unfortunately, however... It was a death to finish, baby. Nobody wins. I think Kevin Owens again did the really dumb thing and tried to attack Braun Strowman. It's like poking a bee's nest. Uh oh. Is that a Sarah Logan schism? Please, I hope it's not. Maybe my girlfriend's countryside's rubbing off on me a little bit and I'm remembering old hoo hoo country phrases. Yeah, this was really fun. This was a surf and surf match. It was excellent. Great opening show. Great opening starts the match. And there you have Elias comes out. A little preview of Elias. Runs on the crowd. Say, if you don't be quiet, I'm going to leave. Seth Rollins expediates that. He comes down, throws <laughs> Elias' chair. Starts the match between Seth and Ginger. And I don't know what it is. This was a great match. This was actually really fun. It was enjoyable. Good back and forth. Showcase both wrestlers' skills. This again, it's a surf and surf rating. It's really good. And just fun action. Eventually, again, the Singh brother tries to interfere. Gets tossed up by the ref. Doesn't follow the ref's instruction. Just gets beat up by Seth Rollins. And then, of course, as he's being inter as he's trying to interfere again, Ginger does the tricky heel thing. Hits him in the head with a steel chair. No one sees it. <laughs> this leads to Seth Rollins being upset, rightfully so. You hit me in the head with a chair, and I'll bite your nose off. But instead of biting his nose off, Seth Rollins hit, used that chair on Jinder Mahal, and that led to a DQ on Seth Rollins. So Seth Rollins technically lost, Jinder Mahal won. And again, this is going to be pretty good. Hopefully it leads up to the Intercontinental title on the line. and. Jinder Mahal, you put him against a good person, and the best comes out. Can you say? 
Um, Seth then continues to beat Jinder and sing with the chair until all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Elias smacks him in the head with a guitar. And of course, the neck brace, the whole gurney thing, he says, No, I'm too tough for that. And this was a good surf and surf match. Then you had Nia Jax, yes, versus Michelle Webb in an exhibition. I thought they're all exhibition matches. Unless they're a champion. They run Rousey at commentary, and again, Nia Jax just kind of says, okay, you do that armbar, this isn't going to work. He told, put me in the armbar, just picks her up, slams her. This, it, it was good, it kind of leads up. However, the heck, wait, that's not the, that's a new one? That's a ham sandwich. So again, this guy and gets a ham sandwich rating. It was good. It is what it was. Makes nine jacks look tougher. So now you have kind of a straight up heel jacks versus the face Ronda Rousey. Heel face makes it kind of easy, especially because it's Ronda's first match. She kind of knows what to expect a little bit. And anyone who watches pro wrestling knows that the heel and face always wrestles. It's, it's, sometimes you get a good face versus face technical match. Sometimes you get heel versus heel scene. Who's going to try and cheat more? Again, heel versus face is kind of just a classic. Again, that was okay. It was a jobber. It's just kind of tossed around. That's why it rated. That's magical and mystical. Ham sandwich rating. Again, found a lot of aluminum this time. Allows me to get more prop. Again, there's a reason why my name is Hobo Tom. This is a Hobo production. But again, overall, it was okay. Then this led to a tag team match between the Woken Matt Hardy. Yes! Delightful! And the Breaker of Worlds? Or the Eater of Worlds, or something like that. The Deleter of Worlds, Bray Wyatt versus The Ascension. And again, because it was a tag team match, if you're going to have a tag team match, you better have dual tag team action. And that match had this. Therefore, this match, ah, oh, there it is. It's a cheeseburger rating. Again, it was a fun match. It was good back and forth. Again, you have the good tag team work. You know the Ascension weren't going to win. But it was fun. I enjoyed it. Then, the next match you had Bobby Roode, who is absolutely glorious, versus Kevin Owens. Again, this was kind of a fun match. Initially, I was going to give it a cheeseburger rating, and I'll explain why. But I bumped it up to surf and surf. And the main reason why is because of the end of the match. If not, eh, it would have been good. It would have been good. It would have been enjoyable. But again, it, the end of the match just really did a lot to help, help boost it. Again, these two are great wrestlers. Bobby Roode with Spear Money from TNA. I don't think they ever wrestled against each other in the indie scene. I'm not too sure about that. I mean, it was a good, really good back and forth. These two, these two know how to utilize the ring. Know how to utilize their moveset. They know how to be creative with the ring and their moveset. So it was fun. But then the surf and turf part, Braun Strowman came out <laughs> and just started to wail on Kevin Owens again. And then nothing finished, baby. Nobody win. Well, actually, Bobby Roode won because Braun attacked Kevin Owens. So technically, Kevin Owens won. Because of outside interference from Braun. Therefore, Bobby Roode loses. And that's the math behind pro wrestling. But again, he started beating on Kevin Owens. And the only thing, the biggest mistake that Bobby Roode made is that once Braun Strowman showed up, he should have ran the heck out of that arena, out of that ring out of that building, out of that town. 
Because as he's there cheering him on, yay, good brawn. Kevin Owens tried to hit him with a ladder. Not happening. Braun took that ladder. Kevin hightailed it out of the ring. Braun threw that ladder pretty good distance. I know they have some prop ladders. Doesn't look like a prop ladder. And the most amazing thing, it didn't get near any people. At least he directed it to the one person who he's supposed to hit. Good for him. But Bobby Roode, you got to get out of there. Because once Braun was finished with Kevin Owens, Braun started to beat on Bobby Roode. Lesson learned, Bobby Roode. And this is a good surf and surf map. Next, you have Sami Zayn, kind of his apology. Uh, it was okay. I mean, that was so terrible what happened last time. He deserved to be wedded. And if he really wanted to show that he was sorry, he would have let the crowd, he would have changed his cadence a lot and allowed the crowd to want him even more. And he should have done that just to show displeasure, even if it was going to be off script. Just to say, hey, what you made me do last week was stupid. I'm going to let these people voice their opinion. And just go, what? 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 And just what did him. And I, and I was okay with that. Normally, the only people who should ever be what are the McMahons. Unless you carry that cadence. But this was okay. And he just should have carried on. But I'll give him some credit. He is a professional. He did what he had to do. Get everyone happy. Bobby Lashley came out. Said, you don't need to apologize. I'm going to apologize for what I'm going to do to you. At Money in the Bank. I really hope that's not a main, main card thing. I, that, that sounds like a pre-show match. I hope it is. Not some of the money in the bank action. I know they're trying to extend the pay per views an hour or so, but I'll, I'll, I'll get to it next. But they're cutting some matches short that really shouldn't be cut short. Then you had Drew get Drew. I almost said Drew Galloway. Drew McIntyre versus Chad Gable, and again, it was an okay match. I probably told the story a thousand times about my sister. I took my sister, my nephews, my girlfriend to a wrestling match. And it was, it was the end of the show. It was the main event. It was Drew McIntyre and Heavy Machinery versus Bobby Roode, who was at, at the time the NXT champion, and Moss and Sabatelli. Of course, McIntyre and Heavy Machinery won. So again, as the victors, they get to do their victory lap around the ring. My sister took out her makeup. Put on her lipstick, eyeshadow, everything. Took the selfie with him, all dolled up. I'm just like, really? Of course, what am I going to do? I can't slap Drew McIntyre for that. He'd probably shove my nose down into my liver. And that's him being nice. Very manly man. Then most, pe most men wish they could be Drew Galloway. If I was Drew Galloway, I'd just walk around without a shirt, probably a squirrel loin, and just say, hey, what you going to do? Nothing! So again, this this was, it was, it was okay. It was kind of a squash match. Chad Gable did get a little offense in, but really upset Drew. So again, this kind of led to an appropriate rating. And the heck? I do like these props. It's a ham sandwich. No, no, it, it, it was okay. It was what it was. This led them to the Memorial Day barbecue, and this was just this was a popcorn time. And this was just funny. Every I think major holiday, especially if it falls on a Tuesday, well, now Monday and Tuesday. I know on Thursdays after Thanksgiving, they, they do have a food fight. It almost know it's inevitable. Rhino, the funny thing, Rhino takes a whole tray of bologna sandwiches, just sits down on a lawn chair, starts eating them. Titus O'Neil just ran down with the B team. 
These foods tasteless. You're serving bologna sandwiches, boiled hot dogs, baked beans with no flavor, bland potato salad, whatever else there was. You just ran it down. You know what? You do need to season your food, folks. Just watch one of my previous videos when I went to NXT for Cinco de Mayo. And I had my guacamole salsa burgers. I got into the Mexican spirit a little bit. I had a lot of tequila that night. Actually, I just found out that the good tequila actually tastes better than the cheap stuff. Who knew? Again, it was fun. Rhino was just sat there. He was eating and throwing food to the fans. Eventually, he had a table spot. Again, that's what happens when you're the last man standing in the ring. The next part uh, was the gauntlet match. And I know there's TV issues, but they could have cut out a couple segments, shortened the Sami Zayn, done a backstage BBQ match, or BBQ spot, whatever it is, and given this match more time. I think it was only like 15, 20 minutes long, 20 minutes at best. And for a gauntlet match, Seth Rollins put on one of the best gauntlet matches ever. And I think that lasted a good hour, hour and a half. I think it took up, the, again, the first, the, the, really the first half of Raw was a gauntlet in his division. And it was excellent. It was awesome. It was enjoyable. I probably gave it a Mignon rating. Yeah. It had to be that or a surf and turf rating, at least. Maybe it was the prime rib surf and turf with main lobster tails. Just that hair short being a flaming on match. I mean, gosh darn it. I know it's Ruby or Riot. Hey, okay. Heidi Lovelace. I know who you are. I mean, she was in it. And it was okay. It wasn't, any, it, wasn't, it wasn't anything great. I mean, nothing really spectacular. But because it was a decent wrestling match. And I do like these props so much. And then the cheeseburger rating. And what you had, you had really Bailey starting off the match. I'll say in about 30 seconds, gave, gave a Bailey to Bailey to, to Liv Morgan. The funny story about Liv Morgan, she was dumb enough to cut herself and actually have to get stitches. I mean, she's not too bright. As she was cutting up her pants, and I think she posted this on her Instagram, and she cut herself deep enough. And just do it beforehand. You know where you're going to cut. Don't be a dope. Yeah, I think I saw Liv Morgan once, and eh, not the friendliest person. And coming to Daytona Beach, being told that you're going to be working Daytona Beach probably doesn't make a lot of people happy. Also known as Bumtona Beach. But that's a whole other issue. But again, it is what it was. Not a big fan. Don't dislike her. Good worker, I guess. Hey, everyone's human. Everyone has their good days and bad days. Heck, knows I've had And I've had some good days. So Liv Morgan starts out, loses in 30 seconds to a belly to belly suplex, which is a horrible finisher because most people do a belly to belly suplex, and unless your name is Taz, the human suplex machine, you're not going to win off. The and Taz didn't win off the suplex often. He used the Taz mission, the Kata Hajime. Probably pronounced that wrong, but I was close. Um, then Sarah Logan came in, got in a little bit more offense. I mean, Bailey, she's tired as, as she appeared. I know she's trying to sell tiredness, not buying it. She won with a roll up against Sarah Logan, and then Ruby, Wright, and then the two of them just jump her, soften her up for Ruby Riot, who beats Bailey with the riot kick, which is okay. Top rope riot kick looks better though. And again, then it was a short match with her and Dana Brooke, and then Dana Brooke's really athletic, and she's one of those women who actually looks healthy too, because Bailey looks a little on. On the skinny side, Sasha's tiny. Dana Brooke looks healthy. What can I say? And very athletic, though. Then, after Dana, it was Mickey James, the, the, the longer part. 
a little bit more. It was just she won with a counter roll up after she grabbed some tights. Eh, nothing great. Then Sasha Banks came in, and and when Sasha Banks came in, I'm like, no one in the Riot Squad. You have no factions in in this woman's ladder match. So that eh, is what it was. Sasha Banks won. Then you try to have Riot Squad interference. Eh, not that great. Then only a cheeseburger match. I would like to thank everyone, including Super Beast 1986 for subscribing. And Northern, you saw the video posted up, and I'll play the combination at the end of this.